Hello, I'm Wayne Gould. In this session we're going to take a look at X-Wings. What they are, how they work, and how to find them. If you haven't heard of X-Wings before, I think you're about to, if you try to solve the extreme Sudoku puzzles in my new series of extreme books. They are necessary, but they can become your greatest friend when it comes to cracking a puzzle open. Here's how they work. We'll jump over the early stages of solving this puzzle because it's all quite standard, but you might like to solve it until you can get to this stage. This is the stage at which most people would get stuck. There are 18 numbers entered already, and in fact, uh, as far as the three goes, we have all of the threes entered already, and we can see that quickly because we have a three down in the bottom status bar here, and because we also have a six in the bottom status bar here, you will see that we also have all of our sixes. So obviously we're not going to find uh, an X-wing that depends on threes and sixes. The first thing I am going to do in the hunt for an X-wing is to write in all of the pencil marks. Now these small numbers that you see scattered throughout this diagram like confetti are notes about the possible numbers that could go into each empty cell. I'm going to shortcut things a little by telling you that the X-wing in this puzzle does depend on twos. And in fact, we have five twos already in this diagram. To hunt for the X-wing, what we need to do is to look at each row and see if there are any rows where a two candidate, the small number two, appears twice in a row. Now it might take you a little while to uh, find that out, especially with so many pencil marks in the grid. Remember, we're looking for rows where the small number two appears exactly twice in the row. Uh, obviously that's once in each of two different cells in the row. I can shortcut your search and show you that there are two rows which qualify. You'll see that I'm moving up to row six of the grid. That is the same row that starts with a four, this row here. Now this row has two candidate twos in it. The first one is here in column one, two, three, four. And the other two is in column five, six, seven, column eight. So row six has two twos in it. The other row which has two twos is row eight, and it's the row which begins with a seven, this row here. It has a two here and a two here. The next thing to do is to see whether the twos in each of those rows line up with each other in the same column. And they do in this case. Here's what I mean. Look at the two in row six, column four. That two is in the same column, column four, as this two, which is the first two in row eight. Similarly, the second two in row six over here is in column eight, but that is in the same column as the row 8 to. In fact, watch my pointer move as I trace the, the rectangle formed by these twos. In the top left hand corner, I start and move to the right to the two in the top right corner. Down to the bottom right corner, across to the bottom left corner, and back up to where I started. Now this rectangle is the X-wing rectangle. It's very important to be able to recognize that kind of pattern. But it doesn't mean that every rectangle is a potential X-wing. Remember that the rows must have only two occurrences of a, in this instance, a two. Let me simplify the picture, picture even further by eliminating all of the cells 
that have numbers without a 2. We can still see our potential X-wing 2 here. This is the X-wing rectangle that I'm tracing with my pointer. Okay, so we've found an X-wing, but what good is it? Well, suppose that here in row 6, column 4, we actually did put a 2 there. What are the consequences of that? For example, where would the 2 go for row 8? Well, it can't go here because we've just put in a 2 for this entire column, column 4. In fact, we could eliminate that 2 now because the big number 2 that I put into row 6 has satisfied that requirement. The only other place in row 8 that you can put it to is the other one we found here in column 8, which you will notice is diagonally opposite the big 2. So if this is going to be a 2, then this one diagonally opposite must also be a 2. Well, okay, but weren't we just guessing when we put that 2 there? Uh, yes, indeed we were, so let's undo it. And I'll go up here to the undo button in the toolbar and get rid of that too, and restore the pencil marks and the candidates that we had there previously. What if the two wasn't here for this column, but was down here? Where would the two go for row six? It couldn't go there, because this two is the entire columns two. The only other place in row six that we could have a two is over here. And you will notice that that is at the other extreme of our X-wing rectangle. It's diagonally opposite the 2 that I just entered. So if this is going to be a 2, then that has to be a 2. If I were to draw a line from this cell here, which is in row 8, column 4, to the opposite diagonal, and then I were to draw another line from the top left corner of that rectangle to the bottom right corner, we would have an X. And it's that X which gives the X wing its name. Of course, in this column, we know a 2 must go here or here. We don't know which one is going to be the 2, but, and this is very important, we don't have to know just yet without being able to uh, make a useful conclusion. The two must be there or there. It can't be anywhere else in column two. In row six, the two must be here or here. It can't be anywhere else. So the X-wing rectangle takes account of all of the twos for all of the rows and columns which form part of the rectangle. You can't have a two outside of that X-wing rectangle. It's no surprise that we can't have any more twos in the rows. We know there are two twos in row six, and it's no surprise that row eight has only two twos because that's what got us, got us interested. But the columns, well, the columns are a different story. If there were any other twos, in this column, column four, they're outside the X-wing rectangle and must be wrong because we know that the two for this column has to be there or there. It can't be anywhere else. But as it happens, column four has no other two. But let's look at the other side of the rectangle in column eight. We know about that two in row six. We know about that two in row eight. But look, down here in row 9, there's a 2. And up above it in row 4, there's a 2. They're not part of the X-wing rectangle. They must be wrong. And so we can eliminate them. And down in row 9, I'll eliminate the 2, leaving just 5 and 8. That X-wing was productive because we were able to make some eliminations we have succeeded in deleting two small number twos. 